I'm at China National Nuclear Corporation, which has developed the third generation reactor, Hualong-1. And I'm here today to discover how the company has undergone reforms over the past three years. We noticed CNNC's recent post on Weibo of a poster about the uh, new sci-fi movie, Wandering Earth 2, which read, if you can imagine it, we can make it happen. And a lot of the uh, nuclear energy technologies shown in the film are inspired by China's nuclear energy technologies in real life, once again, reminding us of how science fiction keeps becoming science fact. So what then could you tell us about uh, China's nuclear technology development in yesteryear and on the horizon of tomorrow? This is an interesting question. Unfortunately, I haven't watched the movie, but I saw the poster, which reads, if you can imagine it, we can make it happen. I believe on one hand, this shows the public's enthusiasm for more progress from our nuclear technology development. On the other hand, the public has accepted the advancement in our nuclear technology. That is great to see. To answer your question on what China plans to achieve regarding nuclear technology, I'd like to share my views from two perspectives. We all know that nuclear reactions include nuclear fission and fusion. Nuclear fission has been achieved. There are about 400 nuclear power plants in the world. 55 of them are in the Chinese mainland. Their operation has greatly benefited people's lives. Nuclear fusion is still being developed, with China leading the world in this realm. Nuclear energy is the most stable and efficient energy source. So what do you think of people's expectations for its development in the future and how it will impact ordinary people's lives? As you mentioned, nuclear energy is very stable. While releasing massive amounts of energy, its stability will significantly impact carbon emission and our daily life. Moreover, we are exploring more civilian uses of nuclear energy such as heating. We are constantly coming up with new ideas, like portable batteries. All these applications will greatly impact our everyday life. The future is looking very promising. For example, our team is developing a gas-cooled micro-reactor. We want to fit the reactor into a container on a truck. If this works out, will be able to provide hospitals or remote areas with power in case of emergency, such as natural disaster. Furthermore, we're using nuclear power generated from plants in Zhejiang and Shandong to supply heat for homes. Heating supply in South China used to be challenging in winter times until we leveraged nuclear power. All these are great applications. The low temperature nuclear heating reactors that we're working on will be dedicated to heating supply. The many uses of nuclear technology will get closer to our lives with more innovative approaches. Many people have long worried about the safety of nuclear power. After uh, Hualong-1 was built, some netizens made posts saying it could resist attacks and prevent leaks. Could you please tell us what makes Hualong-1 safe and secure? After several generations of endeavors, Hualong-1 has been put into commercial operation and begun mass producing. It is China's domestically developed third-generation nuclear power plant with proprietary designs. To stand out as a third-generation plant, we've made lots of improvements based on Generation 2 plus plants, as well as previous nuclear accidents such as the Fukushima nuclear disaster. To be more specific, we built a double-layer shell that can withstand attacks by large aircraft, 
as well as a magnitude 9 earthquake when it comes to safety redundancy. Therefore, the reactor is more earthquake resistant. Other characteristic features of this third generation plant include the innovative adoption of 177 reactor core design and a combination of active and passive safety systems. Gen 2 Plus reactors mostly adopt an active safety measure, which, simply put, requires external inputs or electricity. Say I need water to put out a fire, I have to turn on the pump first. Whereas passive safety features do not require external intervention by taking advantage of natural phenomena such as gravity. This is a very innovative approach. What gaps remain that still need to be addressed in terms of the development of China's nuclear energy technology? And what plans are there to address these? Several gaps need to be addressed. First, our design for future models based on Huolong-1 is already underway, which will be safer and more economical. Environmental adaptability will also be improved by implementing intelligent measures such as autonomous control, remote monitoring, and remote maintenance. In terms of nuclear energy, we will continue future-facing research on fourth-generation nuclear systems such as high-temperature gas reactors and fast reactors. Any successful technology can face such a dilemma. There are certain advantages for being large or small. Large modular reactors can generate immense power, producing up to 1.3 gigawatts of electricity per unit. Just think about the energy equivalent of one uranium fuel pellet to coal. This has certainly provided the power we need for urbanization in everyday life. It is tremendously helpful. Being smaller also means it could be more flexible. Wherever we're needed in case of emergency, we could move our small nuclear power stations there and use them as portable batteries. Granted, we could use conventional power generators, but the drawback is that they require a lot of diesel. But portable nuclear reactors need no diesel, and they could be put into use instantly, wherever we go. Amid this increasingly complex international SciTech situation, how can companies in countries like China avoid being limited by others in terms of core technologies and to, for instance, advance nuclear energy technology? I believe we shouldn't slam shut any window. Despite the harsh environment for international cooperation, we should remain committed to exchanges facilitated by the International Atomic Energy Agency and other international organizations to stay informed and learn from each other. Meanwhile, we must improve ourselves through innovation in proprietary technologies. So far, China remains in full control of its nuclear technologies. In other words, it's safe and controlled. The three-year reform of state-owned enterprises put forward many, many requirements. What were some focus points for your enterprise during this period? Although the three-year reform is coming to an end, we're still constantly taking action. Innovation remains our top priority. So is the safe and collaborative growth of the nuclear industry value chain. I'd like to share a few key concerns. First of all, how can we retain and train talent? We must eradicate absolute equalitarianism so that the truly talented can contribute their top performance in an SOE. Our second focus is the three system reforms. The nuclear supply chain is crucial to us, so we're obligated to enhance it and expand it. To ensure that the entire value chain remains independent and controllable, we must help our allies develop while we strive to grow. Digitalization is playing an increasingly important role. And what are some of the daily applications of digitalization for China nuclear power engineering? And what role did it play in the reforms? Digitalization is of the utmost importance to the CNPE. We started the digital transformation of nuclear technology in 2016 by investing a lot of energy and capital. 数字化权
In recent years, we've made decent headway through building our own big data platform and data middle platform, carrying out smart projects and informatization construction. Although the CNPE is a front-runner in these fields, it's still a long way to complete the comprehensive digital transformation. After the second unit of Zhangzhou's nuclear plant is built, we will go paperless with digital construction to replace tangible blueprints when building the third and fourth units for the plant. Digital transformation of nuclear power plants involves digital design and intelligent construction. To be more specific, we can create a digital twin of an existing nuclear facility. This way, we can avoid being sidetracked in the actual construction phase. In fact, we've recreated the configuration in a virtual model. Additionally, as I mentioned, digitalization can greatly reduce costs by connecting my partners across the country and around the globe. We could reduce costs, improve productivity, and guarantee the best quality. Lastly, digitalization will empower the operation of future plants. Intelligent maintenance measures such as autonomous control and remote monitoring will be revolutionizing. I have no doubt that digitalization will accelerate our growth, so we must remain dedicated to going digital. What do you think was the most difficult part of the recent reforms? The hardest part is the three system reforms including the capacity to promote and demote leading cadres, to expand and share the talent pool, and provide merit-based compensation. The second difficulty relates to talent. During the reform, we realized that, as I mentioned this just now, recruiting and training talent is the most challenging task. This is something we must tackle as an SOE, how to retain talents, and attract talent from around the world remains a tricky job. We must break the barrier and stay open-minded. Tapping into global talent pools, it is imperative that we reform this area. In response, we've created a talent management task force to brainstorm our future talent hunting plans. In addition, we re-evaluated our existing members and updated our talent strategy, sometimes even down to each individual. Lastly, we prioritize retaining talent. What role do you expect China's nuclear energy will play in the future of the global energy market? I'm proud that our nuclear energy development hasn't been interrupted for over three decades, which is quite rare. Moving forward, China will continue to pioneer nuclear energy development because, for one, it has a solid foundation. Secondly, China boasts a huge market. Thirdly, we have lots of talent. In the near future, China's nuclear energy technology will play an important role in the world. This is certain, and I am full of hope.